question. Yes, sir. Um, so question for you guys, how comfortable you feel about this scenario here? So um, I'm looking at a multifamily right now. Um, asking price is a million um, would be owner financed and the numbers don't make sense. Now I got a lender and then it's a no deal. Sorry, is it it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's no deal. If the numbers don't make sense, stop. That's, well, that's so what that, that doesn't make sense. But like, okay. So, um, so the it's a it's a twelve unit, and um, so I went to a, a lender, and the lender was I give you I can give you two maybe three years interest only, hmm. and the cap rate goes from like a two to eleven. Would you guys do that? and figure out over like three years you can bring out the occupancy and the efficient uh, efficiency rate um, to actually do that or is it too much risk uh preston you got any thoughts I, i'm i'm gonna go and it, it doesn't fit my criteria to want to wanna, to want to try to pursue it um usually if the numbers aren't, aren't there man i, I wouldn't <clears throat> just generally say it i i don't know that you should this is just my opinion now. Let's take it. I don't know if you like coming up with creative ways to try to make it work. Um, which that that's a market that I think some people are, are doing and probably doing well at. But man, that that typical gut instinct has always been right. Me. So, hmm. Andreas, dollars, twelve units is pretty pretty big. Yeah. So a couple couple questions on on the twelve units. That's what. Um... Oh man, I've got a calculator right here in front of me. I'm trying to. It's year. about it's about eighty three. If it's a million, it's about eighty three and change. Okay. So you... Yeah. So what are you guys getting for rents right now? Um, it's an average about like seven twenty. Um, okay. Um, that's another another thing is that um the there's a three or four section eights, and they're paying two hundred bucks more than a regular rent. Oh, wow. and there, is, there is a chance of you know um getting 100 percent occupancy with section eight yeah um, which would which would bring the um you know obviously the noi up a lot um another option we're looking into is adding a washer dryer a coin, coin laundry which would um if you do the math it will bring up the value by about 80 grand hmm. um but we're not sure if it's feasible or not yeah so to answer your question would i entertain an interest only uh, deal. I would, um, you know, one of the things, so when we, the 42 unit that I used to be a partner in our first year, our construction loan was interest only. And when a lender looks at a particular opportunity and they say, okay, well, you, you're wanting to get some sort of return or cash flow out of this. We actually want to make sure we're getting paid. So they'll work with you on those kind of deals. Uh, it definitely helped out. It definitely helped out with our cash flow. It helped us get the property stabilized and then, you know, ultimately um, flip it within about three years. And I've been on the LP side of a deal that um, was interest only for five years. Now, it, it scared me because there was no huge heavy value add. There was there was nothing like that. Um, and this is one of the one of the big time players. I'll, I'll share with you who it was offline. Um and uh, I, I invested in this deal because I wanted to learn from them and see how they kind of operated and whatnot. And um, we just went full cycle on that property back in December. And it was a 74% return. Uh, and it was an interest only loan for the time that they held the property. Um, and, you know, so there's, I, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, if you think interest rates are going to stay where they're at for a while, of course, nobody knows, right? The Fed has said for a while they're going to start creeping up next year. And they've already started to show them a little bit of that. But, um, you know, if you think that those are going to stay or if you think that you're going to be able to exit it uh, in a few years and not necessarily worry about because there's there's two different ways that you can look at making money on multifamily right there's there's uh, having distributions every month having a huge payout at the end because you've you know you've bought down your tenants have bought down the equity uh in the property or you just increase the noi to where you're not really you know you, you don't have to do a whole lot of value add to the property to begin with so there's a lot of different things you can look at but at the end of the day what is the overall return for those three years and if you're in this is why it's super important to have more than one exit strategy on a property 
right? Because you don't know what interest rates are going to do for, let's say, two years down the road, right? Um, but uh, I I used to think that was a huge gamble and huge risk, but if, if with the right operators, uh, I think it's it's one wor- well worth taking um, for sure. All right. Thank you. Yeah, man. We got a couple more people here. Any any other questions from the the group? Or Andreas, do you have another one? I have another one. How did you find your deal? The one that you just discussed. The the sixteen unit that Preston and I are partners on? Preston, how did you find that? Well, let's see, man. Let's go back to the ducks. Um <laughs> Man, and, and it just goes to say you never know who you're talking to and you can never talk about what you do. So I'm actually at a at our duck hunting camp. I'm an avid waterfowler, love waterfowling, huge passion of mine. So we're at, I'm at our camp, and uh, there's a guy I don't really recognize, and, and we've um hanging out by the fire, just kind of doing the traditional camp stuff, having a few beers, a few drinks, and talking about what we do for a living, and this and that, and this and that, and uh, – he actually mentioned that he's wanting to get into to real estate also and was um, had taken some some mentor classes with with our other mentors. And um, man, we just kind of hit it off, started talking about real estate and what we wanted to do and, and go in places anyway. Transfer that about three weeks, man. And I uh, I just wanted I just reached out to him and um, just said, Hey man, just checking in our conversation, dude. You know, keep me in the loop. Do you hear anything? Um, and I'll do the same for you. And uh, he actually responded back and said, hey, I got a friend of mine who's from the, the Mobile area. And uh, I think y'all would, y'all would, you know, y'all could do some business together. He's a broker. And, uh, man, he's a really cool guy. I'd like you to meet him. And uh, and that was kind of where it, where it started, man. I, I got the guy's number and uh, just started nurturing that relationship, man. And uh, he actually said that he had a deal that was under contract. And the deal, um, the guys had not done any due diligence, haven't been by the property, didn't appear that they were going to do anything uh move forward with it and the deal actually wound up come falling out of contract and and we were right there to scoop it up just because of that one conversation so scooped it up so to so to speak to use preston's words because our offer uh he mentioned that this property was under contract the contract expired on let's just call it a friday our offer went in on wednesday prior to uh, in, in, as Preston said, he'd been nurturing a relationship with, with that broker. Um, and that's why I want to go back. It, it's super important to have, if you're, if you're open to partnerships and having team members to have somebody who, um, uh, compliments, compliments your weaknesses, because that is something that I struggle with. Something I've learned from Preston is, is it doesn't take a, a fancy zoom meeting and, and all this different, you know, proper scheduling to just pick up the phone and call somebody, call a broker, call a master, fellow mastermind member, or call, call, uh, uh, a lender. Uh, that's something I need to start doing. And, uh, I just, you know, create those relationships cause that's, it really is a relationship business. And, uh, that's something I learned from Preston is you just take 15 minutes a day, make one phone call and that's it, you know? Don't have to be anything fancy. Just the old, the old cell phone. <laughs> that's that's awesome. The the um, yeah, that's the follow up question. Or the reason I'm asking is, there's this pocket where I live where um, it's very rare to find like these small multis, you know, twelve to I said twenty units, and there's one pocket where there's about like ten of those, and there's always signs out there, vacancy, call the owner, so you know it's a mom and pop, so. I'm thinking of, you know, doing direct mail to them. Um, but I know, you know, I only have experience or, or, you know, with single families or small multis. I'm not even sure like what you're going to do with like a, a bigger multifamily to like get them enticed to even call you back, um, you know, if, whether they want to sell or not, but just give, you know, get to know them. Um, you know, are you submitting an offer? Like you run the numbers and think this is going to be my offer and submit a number with that? Or what would you do? Me personally, go Preston. Man, I, one thing that I I always try to cut out, and this is just one thing I I love talking. Um, I would try to find the owners, um, just because you never know what time clock they're on. I, I personally, I mean, I know we've we've missed a lot of deals because of waiting too long. So 
So if, if, if you just have a feeling that, that somebody might want to sell a property, man, try to get to the owner. There's several ways you can do that too, man. Um, go ask a, you know, if you see a tenant in the yard, Hey man, you know, who, where's a property management company? A lot of times mom and pop, it is a mom and pop. Um, and, and just go try to try to get in touch, get in front of the owner as quick as possible. And then for, from there, man, you know, if you're unsure, I would say deflect, 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 just build that rapport, build that rapport. Um, just let them know you're a real person and, and you're going to get a lot of bonus points with them just by having a good conversation with them and just be a, a person that they enjoy talking to. And, you know, you might not know all the answers. Well, that's when you come out to the mastermind group and start asking the questions. I, that's, that's, I mean, I've, I've done this 110%. Um, so if you, if you don't know all the answers, man, just try to deflect the best you can and don't try to say the wrong thing in that mini like red flag, this guy know what he's doing type thing. But uh, man, just try to deflect the best you can, build that rapport, get to know them that, get to know them as best as you can, and then come back in the mastermind group, start answering those questions, and then try to call them back with the answers, and then you've already got that rapport there. So that's what what I would do. Uh, Andreas, is it? Did I understand you correctly? When you drive by the property, it says for rent. Call the owner, and it has a phone number. As soon as I said that, and as soon as Justin <laughs> started talking, I was like, just give 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 the number a call. You know, like it's it. Is it? I just call the number. I, I've got there's there's um, there's a handful of properties that I've found in the last couple of months that I really, I would absolutely love to have them. Uh, getting the owner to answer the phone and call me back has has been a challenge, but uh, I don't even do like you know. There's a lot of folks who do these mass mailers, thousands of mailers every month, uh, and then you know start dialing. They skip, I, I'm very small and I'll, I'll skip trace a handful and I'll, I'll go after those. And, and I've, one of the things that I've realized that I've, I've come to is that, you know, we're looking for, for some home run properties and they're not, you know, base hits are going to get you in the hall of fame basically, but it's the home runs that I'm looking for. And I've got to be more patient with that. And I've got to do exactly what Preston talked about and, um, you know, Billy and Skyla from the mastermind, I'm going to, I'm going to give them some credit. They've been working on this deal for maybe a year and a half, I think. And it looks like the seller is going to, uh, is it what is an off market deal. Uh, it looks like the seller is finally coming around, but it's been on his terms, right? He wasn't interested in selling. He was interested in renovating it, putting, getting top dollar, putting it on the market, blah, blah, blah. And they just kept after him and the guy kept not fulfilling what he was saying he was going to do as far as the renovation. And uh, it looks like they're about to, to close on a really, really nice deal. It took them a year and a half maybe to, to get it to this point. But I kind of feel like, you know, I echo what Preston said, when you um, call the owner, you know, just go meet him. Just go meet him. Look, man, I'd love to come look at your property, but I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you. I'm interested in buying it, <laughs> uh, you, you know, if you ever want to, but if you're not ready to sell, I'd really just like to come by and just meet you and kind of see the property and maybe walk one of the units if you've got one available, you know. Um, I, I don't think it's going to hurt anything to have that conversation. And don't wait, man. I, I, I know oh, yeah. we, we've missed out on several opportunities um, just by waiting, you know, and then you, all of a sudden you see somebody, new ownership, and you're like, crap, should have called. Yep. Awesome. That's very valuable. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. You bet. Anybody else have a question? If not, we're going to wrap up. All right, Preston. Uh, hang on. We got one in the chat. And I'm going to read this out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is uh, that question. The question is, and this is from Thomas, is how is Preston from Alabama and a Cubs fan? Uh, I happen to know Thomas is from the Chicago area as well. So uh, it's it's probably a little more personal for him. So, <laughs> how are you, uh, Cubs Thomas, fan? Thomas, <laughs> uh, this jacket has no other meaning to me other than warmth. <laughs> <laughs> that is the god honest truth. Um, oh, ouch! We got this. We we got this jacket. Um, it, it did come from the World Series. It, it did, and and uh, my my father in law got it. He was there, and at one of our customers now grandson um used to play for the cubs so they got them tickets and, and that's where this jacket come from uh man i i used to be a, a big baseball guy but as of as of right now my office is cold and this is the only jacket i could 
<laughs> well, Preston, if you ever wanted to alienate Cubs fans everywhere, uh, you just successfully did that. So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys. Just, it's just me. It's just me. I mean, the Cubs are a great team. I love the Cubs. I mean, you could have come up with some story like Sammy Sosa <laughs> autographed that for you when when you were seven at the game. You know, you could have come up with anything. It is like, uh, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so in the chat thomas says what happened to being personal to build relationships well thomas it's about it's about building the right relationships you know with with winning teams and uh <laughs> but it's also oh, about being genuine and telling the truth huh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you came on camera for that one that's good that's good <laughs> i love it uh all right, guys. Preston, thank you for your time, man. I really do appreciate it. One thing, just to just to um, kind of round this out you know, on the conversation of, of getting past those nerves. If somebody's listening to this and they're like, "Man, it's my first deal," I got my very first deal. You know, I was nervous of, uh, and it was it was like twenty three thousand dollars. My very first single family that we bought, and I was nervous about that. And uh, so I don't know. You know, I think as you grow as investors that number moves, right? And it keeps moving, it keeps moving. Um, as a matter of fact, the, the deal we were looking at, and I finally said no on, I mean, we were gonna come out, come out of pocket like a hundred grand, uh, just as a down payment. And um, that was making me a little nervous, right? But the balls moved a little bit, so no matter where you're starting or where your next deal is, what is one piece of advice you would give to folks uh, who are kind of on that edge, let's say they're two weeks from that closing and, and they call their partners and they're just super nervous. What kind of advice can you give them to, uh, to keep at it and keep going? Uh, get out of your own way. Um, hmm. speaking from experience, you know, that's, that's one thing I know for sure that I, I've done for myself is, is, is get in my own way. And man, there's yeah. no telling where, where it would be if, if I just wouldn't, if I would have looked at the positive versus the negative, um, there's a lot more positive that will come from it than negative if you have the right team in place. And if you're confident in your team, you're confident in your systems, just do it. Um, because the only way to, to, to get, get through it is is through it. You know? Yeah. So I would just say, man, just, just try to silence the inner negativity and focus on the positive of, of what could happen if it does go right. Don't, don't look right. at what could happen if it go wrong because you'll always stay in the rut. And I've been in the rut for, for many, for, you know, two, three years. And it's a lot better outside the rut than it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Good stuff. Preston, thanks again uh, for your time today. And, and uh, I'll talk with you soon. Andreas, Tom, Tim, thanks for joining us. I'll see you guys. Later.